Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Mernstack Crash Course. In this episode, we're going to launch our server using Node and Express. So last episode, we left off with two folders. We have the front-end folder and the back-end. We've been working on setting up our backend. In the backend folder, we should just have a couple of things here. We should have this package.json and package.lock.json files, which just contain information for the packages we are using, as well as this node modules folder that actually contains the packages themselves. Then we should have this config.env that contains our unique access key to Mongo, and then the main file we were working in last episode called connect.js, which writes the functionality that is connected to MongoDB. At the very end of last episode, we left off working with this module.exports object, and I didn't really go over fully what it does in the last episode, so let me explain it to you now. When we're using Node.js, every JavaScript file can specify one module.exports field. Anything specified within the module.exports field can be imported into another file by using the keyword require. It's very similar to the idea of import and export in regular JavaScript, so let me show you how it works. I'm going to go ahead and make a new file at our backend for our server. So I'm going to say server.js. And this is the file we're actually going to run when we're making our server. If we want to import the exports from connect.js, all you need to do is make a variable. We'll just call it, let's say, connect for right now, and set it equal to the keyword require, and then pass in the route for that file, which should be just dot slash connect, just like this. All that this line is doing is making a new variable called connect. And by using this require connect, what we're doing is looking in this connect folder and we are setting this connect variable equal to the entire module.exports object that we're exporting from connect.js, which is just this object right here with the two functions that we made. Using module.exports and then require statements in Node is the equivalent to using export and import keywords in React, where you normally export a function component and then import it into one of your files at the very top of the page. One of the most important things to note when using require statements is that it actually fully runs the file. So for instance, if I go into our connect.js file, then I go to the very bottom of this page and I just say like console.log hi like this. And then I go ahead and save it. And I save both these folders. And I go ahead and open up our terminal here. So let's open up terminal. And then we can run any file using the node command. So I can say node server.js. Notice how it prints out hi right here. So that's just something to keep in mind that every time you use the keyword require, you're gonna actually run the file that you're importing. Before we continue, there's some packages we're going to want to install. The first one will be Express, which I briefly went over in the first episode. Express allows us to launch our server and it also allows us to set up what we call middleware, which will allow our front end to communicate with our back end. Open up your console, ensure you're in the back end folder, and then go ahead and type npm install express like this. And we're going to actually want to add one more library as well. There's a library called cores that will need to avoid some annoying errors. So let's add cores to the list, just spelled C O R S. And let's press enter to install these two libraries. And now, just like we can import libraries and packages into our React code using import, we can do the same thing in node folders by using the require statement once again. So for instance, if I want to import the express library, all I need to do is make a variable for express. I'll say const express equals and then require, and then it's just express like this. Just make sure that whenever you're importing a library or package that you installed, you're not using this dot slash because you're not looking at a file in your directory. Let's also import the cores library we just installed as well by just writing const cores equals require cores, just like this. Before we can set up our express server and middleware, we need to make one more variable. We need to actually create the express application because right now we're just importing it into our code. So to actually create it, it is super simple. It's just one line of code. And all that is is const app equals express, just like this. This variable can be named whatever you want, but it's pretty common practice to just name this app because it represents our Express app. This Express that you're seeing right here is simply a function that instantiates our Express app. And now we can interact with our Express app by using this app variable we just declared. So next, let's actually set up and run our Express server. First, we're gonna be running the server on our local machine for right now. Because of that, we should specify a port number that we want to use. A port is just a number that you can specify that specifies where your computer is looking for information from the internet. Each computer has access to practically thousands of ports, but one of the most commonly used ones and a common default is just port number 3000. So I'm gonna go right under here. I'm gonna make a new variable as a constant. I'll say const port equals 3000. Before we actually boot up the server, we should make two quick lines that will help us out later down the road. The first one is app.use, and then inside of this, we're just gonna put cores like this, and then right below that, all we're gonna do is app.use once again, and we're gonna say express.json just like this. So app.use is a function that mounts what we call middleware. 
Pores is the library we imported just a moment ago and tells Express how to handle sharing resources across different domains. This is important because our front-end and back-end will be hosted on two separate ports. So without this line here, you'll likely get errors later on when we try to connect our front-end and back-end together. And then this app.useExpress.json is just mounting this express.json method, which just tells Express to parse request in JSON format, which makes it much easier for us to work with. And it makes it so that we don't have to call json.parse every single time we get a request, which makes our lives a lot easier. Now, all we need to do to set up our Express server is call one last method from Express. We can go ahead and go down here, write app, which represents our Express app, and then type dot listen just like this. The dot listen method is what basically creates our server. A server in the context of web development is just a computer connected to the internet that will listen for incoming requests. And that's exactly what this dot listen method is doing, hence how it is creating our server. Now exactly what it is listening for and what it does once it gets a request, I'll get into into the next episode because that's what we'll be writing our backend functionality. For now though, we need to pass in two arguments for this listen to work the way that we want it to. The first one should be the port that we specified, which is just 3000 and that's stored in this port variable here. So we'll write port like this. And then the second argument should be a callback function, which is a function that will run whenever the server is established. So to specify a function, we'll use arrow notation. So we'll do parentheses, our arrow, and then curly brackets, just like this. Notice how the use of callback functions is kind of a common theme in backend development. In this callback function, there's one super important thing that we need to do. When our server is created, we need to run the connect to server function that we created in this connect.js file. Last episode, we wrote all this code to get us connected to Mongo, but inside this listen callback function is where we can actually call that code to hook us up to MongoDB. We've already imported the stuff from our connect folder up top here and stored it in a variable called connect. Therefore, that's how we're going to access the connect to server function. So all we need to do to call this is say connect dot, and then we're going to call the function specifically, which is just connect to server, just like this. This line is just accessing our connect import from connect.js and then calls the connect to server function we specified, which we know from last episode gets us connected to MongoDB. The very last thing I want to do in this listen function here, just so we know it's running correctly, is to write console log, just so we can console log something out here to make sure it's running right. Let's say, actually let's do something like this. I'll say server is running on port and then we'll do port just like this. Let me quickly summarize all this code right here just so we're 100% on the same page. This app.listen method is telling our local computer, which is where we're hosting our server, to listen to the port 3000, which essentially gives us a connection to the internet. And once it has the connection established, we run this callback function right here, which in our case just calls a connect to server function we made last episode, and then console logs that were successfully connected to the right port. Let's now have a moment of truth. Let's go ahead and open up our terminal again. And let's actually run this file to see if it actually connects to our server, because in theory it should. So we'll make sure we're looking at our backend. And then we'll say node server.js to run it. And you can see it prints off high from our connect folder, which I'll go ahead and actually delete that. Just get out of the way. Let's delete that. But you can see it says server is running on port 3000. The fact that this server is running on port 3000 line got printed out means that this callback function ran just fine and we didn't get any errors. So it's safe to assume that our server launched without any trouble. Now that we have our server launched and connected to MongoDB, we're gonna end this somewhat shorter episode here. In the next episode, we're gonna work on configuring Express to make our backend routes, which is where we can write the code to actually create, read, update, and delete stuff from MongoDB. Take care everyone and I'll see you in the next one.